Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, new live coding session. For this new session, uh, we'll be playing on a website uh, called Code Wars, uh, which features uh, some uh, programming exercises uh, to do with various difficulties. And uh, we'll try to, to tackle a few ones. Uh, I made a quick selection. Uh, maybe I can share it to you, to you in the chat so, uh, so you can have a look at, at the exercise I, I picked. Uh, not sure yet uh, which one we do because uh, I selected a few more than, uh, than the, the time allows to do, I think. I guess with this link, you can, you can see my selection, my selection for today. So what, what I think is I, I, I'll try uh, the first one. Uh, I choose one. Uh, we'll, we'll try it. We'll do it. Uh, so you can uh, you can see how it goes. Uh, obviously, I will uh, I will be explaining uh, during the, the whole session what I'm doing, uh, and then you can have a look at uh, at the list and uh, uh, if something uh, interests you, uh, let me know in the chat and uh, it will be the, the next ex exercise we we pick. So. Uh, uh, I'm going to share the, the web page. OK, so you should be able to see my screen now. Um, the first one I, uh, I want to try is this one. Uh, it's uh, just so you know, there was a ranking thing uh, in, the, in the platform. Uh, the exercise are uh, named Kata, in fact, um, on our rank from AQ to 1Q. 1Q being the hardest. So this one should be fairly simple. But I picked it because there, there were two improved, improved versions uh, of it, uh, which are way harder according to, to the description. So we'll try the, the first version, which uh, should be simple. And uh, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can uh, figure out uh, the, the next version, which should be the, the same exercise, but uh, with uh, harder performance tests. So we have to, to come in to come up with something smart. Uh, just so you know, I'm not uh, usually very really good at uh, algorithms, so maybe uh, I will fail miserably in the, the other version, but uh, we'll see that. So um, the exercise we, we have to do uh, is, um, you, you probably all have seen uh, some, some, of the, some, some things of the same kind with, uh, with numbers. It's uh, fairly, uh, fairly uh, common. Uh, the idea is that uh, we'll be given um, a row of colors. So colors can be uh, red, green, or, or blue. And uh, we have to, to find the, the, the last row of the, of the, of the, of the shoot, basically. So if, uh, if it starts with uh, this row, uh, and I take uh, these two ones, it gives me the, the first one on, on the next row. And then I take these two ones and it gives me this one, etc., etc. So, um, so the idea is just to to reduce it to the last uh, to the to the last digit, to the last color and return the color. So that's the, the exercise. Um, let's do it. So we have to, we have to pick the language. Uh, I picked Ruby here yeah, because I like that and uh, I won't be. Uh, I won't be um, uh, looking at the documentation all the time for the other version, so I think it's, it will be cool. And maybe we'll switch the, the language to, for, the, for the next exercise, uh, if you like. So uh, let's start to do that. Uh, this should be fairly obvious. Uh, I can code here, but I think I will be uh, opening the, the code in my editor um, most of the time, so it should be easier for me to, to write it. So let's let's try. Um, I can test it uh, locally, so I like that too. Uh, yeah, sure. The problem is it's this one. There you go. Um, so let's try that. Uh, I think the, the, the ID is fairly, fairly obvious. Uh, we'll just um, take the first line, which is given as a parameter. Uh, as you can see, uh, I have some sample test case uh, already here. 
um, already here uh, to help me write the codes, but uh, there is a lot more tests behind that I can't see, so basically the, the code has to have to pass on a, on a, on a, I can then uh, attempt the test and, and see if everything works. Uh, so let's try that. I think the idea will be just to iterate over the over the row, generate the next row, and return uh, return the color when uh, once the row is uh, a length of one. So let's try that. Um, So I'm going to do that to convert the row to an array of characters. Um, I'm not sure if it's the right. I think I will add it with a for loop instead. Uh, I'm gonna write the code in the in the editor instead, it will be easier. Um, Thing is, I never do for loops in RB. I think it's like that way too. Um, so basically, there is an infinite loop on IB. I think I do it smarter way. So this is a, a range, like, so it will be basically uh, behave like an array containing uh, all the digits from one to the length of the, of the row. Uh, and I will use a, a function called map, which will basically yield me the value of the, the array for each element. And, uh, and the map function will take a block like this. So I, so I have my index, it's basically just a loop, but it will the, the entire function will return the result of the of the block for each of the elements here. So let's do, let's do that. Um, so I'll just basically reassign row um, to, uh, to a new uh, to a new thing and uh, So basically, this is just an, an infinite loop. We will return when the, the row is um, is empty. Um, is the the last color we have, and until that, we'll be repeating this. So basically, we will be uh, stripping uh, one color each time uh, from the from the line. So that's the that's the the dumb solution, I think. So it's uh, very naive and uh, won't work on. Uh, large inputs, but uh, we'll try that. Uh, it should be enough to pass the, the first version. Uh, so basically, what I will be doing there is just compare the row at the index given and the row at the index before, because I, st I started that one exactly for that reason, so I can get the uh, index uh, one from start and compare it to index A with index zero. So let's, um, so let's say we have two elements. Um, Uh, 
so basically the rule is uh, if the post uh, does if both are the same color I'll return that color uh, else uh, I'll return the missing color uh, so to do that um, I'll just uh, encode the, the few cases here. Um, test for RG, I have to test for RG, RB, error is already done by that, and then I have to test with GB, I think, um, and the other ones are just inverted, so it's okay, so that's the three versions. Um, Just join uh, the whole array to a new string. Um, I don't think that's, that's necessary at all. Um, let's do, let's try that. I think that was the problem. I was still going until all dot lengths, uh, but I should exclude it. So I did a dot. Let's try again. So the loop should. should uh, uh, okay. I think I can run that. Okay. So I'm passing the sample this case. I just attempt my solution now. Um, okay. Passed. So. And that's the first version. As you can see, it's pretty naive because um, for very large strings, uh, we will uh, we will uh, have a, a way to high complexity here. Uh, so we'll try to find a way to reduce this this uh, complexity by uh, not recomposing everything. I think so. Just uh, just a my solution since it works. Um, and let's go over to the next one. It's okay, perfect. So this is the very same exercise, but uh, we'll try to improve the performance of our solution. So I use the, the link if you want to see. It's a, it's a very simple problem, but I think the test cases are way harder. Uh, so let's just uh, try again with our previous solution to see if it if it works or if it fails miserably as I think it will do. Um, ah yeah. Do that all the time.
Okay, so basically, I have um, the first thing, the first test uh, passing, but uh, but uh, the other tests are failing because my code is taking way too long. Uh, so the idea here is because we just uh, removing one color, um, one color at a time, um, we'll basically do a lot of iterations. Uh, until the the row is uh, is just uh, just one one thing, so that's way too much computations. Um, so let's try to to figure out uh, what we can do to to improve that. Uh, can you please change the language to Python CGS? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll try another language for the for the next uh, exercise. I just for you, it will be it will be here because I already have a solution to iterate from, but. Um, I'll switch for the for the next exercise, so I can do a different language uh, during the session. I think that would be cool. Um, okay, so basically my ID, uh, I'm not sure if it works, but uh, let's look at the instructions. Uh, I think basically solving this row is exactly the same as, sol as solving solving this row and solving this this row. And then solving just the, the, the character in the middle. Um, I'm not sure of that, but uh, I think I can um, I can test. Um, so let, let's uh, let's just try uh, in the in the editor. I'll take the example. And we'll see if it works. So basically, my idea was just to split the line into two parts. So that's the first line. We'll take it there. And my idea was that for computing the next line, I could just split that into compute that part, which would reveal this compute that part which should deal this and then just compare these two, the two and that's the two uh, this one and this one that's the two in the middle which should give us a g and And if, you, if we can get that, we get the solution. Um, I'm thinking of splitting the, the, the input here because basically what I want to do uh, is to process recursively until uh, there is just two characters to compute so, so we can have the, the, the simple check. Uh, and we'll be caching the, the, the results because uh, obviously I believe there, there will be repeating patterns, for example, uh, Maybe uh, maybe this one I can find uh, can find after or maybe uh, try to find one. But uh, I can't find one. But for large strings, I think there will be repeats. So we can, uh, for example, if I compute first this part, which will be bracket. Uh, into uh, two parts, uh, two parts again. That's uh, that's a recursive fun function we'll be writing. Um, the idea is that I can cache the result of uh, these two, for example, and then cache the result of these two, and then cache the result of the whole thing. So whenever I encounter it again, I'll be using the the, the result I already computed. So basically, I, I will uh, cache result for bigger and bigger and bigger substrings, and uh, hopefully it will work. Um, it will work well. So let's try to do that. Um, I will implement that in a class because I feel it's easier. And I just have, um, I'll, I'll build a results hash. So basically, I will uh, save every substring I get from, um, from the um, uh, every result I get, I will, I will cache the, the result, so I will save the result for for the use. And before computing anything, I will check if I have the result for for the substring already. Uh, 
And if I have, I will use it uh, immediately. So I think it, this can reduce uh, algorithmic complexity and therefore optimize uh, those, the solution. So let's try that. Uh, I have a method called uh, cool because uh, that data is cool, uh, which will basically do exactly that. Except it won't. Um, so what I said, let's see the. So basically, the first thing I will check if, uh, because this will be a, a recursive function, I check if I have the, the result already for the for the row for the, for the row, or I'll compute it. So basically, what I'll say is that uh, I can do that. So that's going to be my, my call method. Um, I think uh, that's going to be simple. I, I'll try with the. Um, so basically, what I'll be doing is that I'll split the row into, um, and just return the row if uh, row point that length is one, as before. So basically, if the end is one, we return it because it's the end. Else, we compute, um, we we'll split, uh, we we'll split it in two parts, as I said. So uh, let's say uh, it's going to be A and B again. Um, What I'm doing here is just splitting the, the row in two. So this, uh, this syntax allows me to specify a range in the, in the row string, um, starting from zero until uh, half the length of the, of the, row, of the row, excluding uh, excluding it. And then we'll start from half the length uh, and go to the last, char to the last character, which uh, I can write uh, 
minus one, uh, it's uh, it's one from the end of the of the string. So this rule works, uh, I think. Um, so what I said, it's basically computing the row is computing for A, computing for B. Um, so I just concatenate that, but in the middle, we have to, put, to compute for the last character of A and the first character of B for the middle, uh, for the middle thing. So I think that would be this way. So last character of A, first character of B. And then we take this, that's the compute one function now. And we move that because we don't need it anymore. Uh, let's re-implement that. So basically, I'm just creating an instance of my class and calling the method call with the row. So, like that. Um, so, what I want to do now. Um, Just move this. Uh, I shouldn't compute it, I should call call so the results will be cached. Um, Does that work then? Oh yeah, but then I have to to recurse on that. Um, so let's do it differently. I think I have to, to, to do it this way, so it will, uh, I change that and I'll explain after. Um, the loop and then um, we're breaking this way So let's do that. Um, mm, 
Ok, I think I have to do something a bit simpler. Basically, uh, and that is it. So like that. I think this, this should work. So basically, what I'm doing is that uh, we have the, the very same loop as before, uh, but we have a results, uh, which is a, a hash table. Uh, so we can uh, index objects uh, in it uh, using uh, whatever. Uh, in this case, uh, substrings of the of the row. So basically, uh, we just uh, loop indefinitely until uh, until uh, there is only one, one, one character in the, in the string, um, and then we compute, the, we just compute the, the next uh, otherwise to reduce the number of characters. So this is basically the, the same as before, except this one compute next uh, with this syntax. Basically, it will mean uh, if this is already existing, this is the or, or equal operator, uh, it will uh, return it. Uh, if it's not existing, it will assign from the result of this, this function call. So basically, this is a function call in Ruby, and it's perfectly legal to omit parentheses, but I can write that like that. Can write that uh, too. Uh, so, and basically, what this does is uh, so that just a quick sanity check to avoid uh, splitting uh, splitting rows that uh, that are only one character um, because uh, they are the, the result of themselves. Um, And otherwise, uh, we just um, we just split the, the row in two and call compute next, which will again cache the result. So basically, we will try for uh, we'll, we'll split uh, we'll split the row in half and split each half in half uh, until we have uh, just one character, I think, because then this function will return because uh, the length is equal to one. Um, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, compute the, the result for many substrings as we uh, as we proceed to split uh, to splitting the two by two. So uh, let's try that. And hope it won't loop indefinitely. So I still get an error. Oh yeah. Okay. 
by the way the, this um, I still timed out that's weird um, I'll try I'll try it myself Okay, so my code is looping indefinitely, I think. Um, let's take a that. So basically, if I put GB in there, uh, I'm then going to call with GB. The other plan is not equal to one. So we process the next row, uh, compute next, look for result, but can't find one because this is the first loop. So we split and compute next. Split on compute next. We'll call that. We'll check here. We'll check that by the way. Um, that um, and if I try it with uh, this one for example or uh, Fine. On. Let's try with uh, with that so just to be sure. Okay. So what are the the second one has uh, as three. Okay. Uh, so it's perfect. So I think I still have GP error fails. So why this fails? Um, let's try again. So we call war, length is not one, we compute next, there is no result, so we split on compute next. So basically let's uh, let's do that. I guess A will be Double R or single R and B will be double R. So what happens there? We compute next with A, which is just R, so it should return it immediately. 
so it outputs r and then we compute one with the last of a which is just r on the first of b which is r2 so we get another r and then we compute oh yeah i can see i can see the issue there um why is that Yeah, yeah, okay, so, and we compute next with B, which is RR. Uh, so the compute next will... Go there again, enter that, return R, but we're still comparing RRR. So that's not good. Uh, so what did I do? because uh, then we get exactly the, the same inputs, but uh, we didn't reduce the wall. Uh, why is that? Um, because this first half is good. Oh yeah. I think we should do that instead. So if I get R, R first, it will return that one, return R, and then doesn't work again because then a will be r r we compute next with which one item r we compute the middle the next one oh yeah but the, there is no middle one to compute because yeah it, there is a middle one but okay okay i think i, I, I need to return the empty string if components yeah okay that's because it will already be a, be a continue this one. Hmm. Okay, so now the code works. Let's see if it works fast. So let's attempt our solution. By the way, you can see uh, from the from the ranking of the the kata and the, the time I took to improve that that um, uh, there is a clear gap between uh, implementing a, a nice solution uh, like I did uh, in the first uh, in the first part um, and uh, implementing the solution which pass performance tests, which is not the case here. Uh, so small random test passed, but uh, I think the, um, the performance test didn't pass. Um, that's why the, the exercise is, uh, is wider. Uh, what are you doing is a question in the chat. Uh, I'm basically doing a, an exercise on code wars which attempts to provide solution for this problem. Uh, basically, we need to reduce the colors uh, by comparing uh, two by two. If it's the same, uh, we output the same color. If they are different, we output the missing color. So it's just RGB. And we can we need to return the, the last uh, the last pro of computations. And basically, this is the second version uh, of, the, of the exercise, which is uh, harder than um, than the first we, we tried uh, just before and passed, but uh, this one is, uh, is harder to, to complete. So, um, so basically, uh, I think um, 
my code is not uh, performant enough. Enough. Um, unfortunately, as I said, I'm putting bad uh, at alg algorithm. So maybe there is a, a clever way to do that. I thought uh, caching the results will uh, will solve that, but uh, looks like it uh, it doesn't. Mm. So maybe there is a, a better way. Anyway, I can I can find out. So if anyone has a suggestion, we'll try. Otherwise, uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll try uh, another exercise uh, because uh, we have already spent uh, almost half the time uh, there. So I want uh, and I want to be doing uh, most of today and try other language uh, as promised. Um, but basically, the, we, we showcase the one uh, important idea there is that it's uh, the one expre expressed by that line with just uh, a way to uh, to cache computation results. Uh, by the way, this is called uh, dynamic programming. Uh, if you're doing some uh, algorithms, you'll encounter that uh, frequently. And uh, as you can see, I don't do. Uh, Algorithm, algorithm usually, uh, and I'm pretty bad at them, so so that's why I can pass that. Um, obviously, uh, we, we could try uh, more ideas. Uh, I believe this there is maybe a, a simple mat mathematical formula which uh, which would allow basically uh, maybe to just uh, um, to just um, iterate over the, the first row once and uh, find out the. the the output uh, with a clever mathemat mathematical trick, but uh, I, re I really can see it. So uh, failed for this one, which was quite a early on, by the way. And uh, so let's try another one. Uh, uh, I sent the list in the at the beginning of the session, so maybe if you want to to choose, uh, you can uh, you can suggest uh, the one you you would like to to see uh, the most. the list back if you want to see it again. Uh, if you guys want to, to pick the, the next exercise uh, I'll be doing, uh, just have a look and uh, let me know. And I'll on votes in, uh, in two minutes. And in the meantime, if you have uh, any question about uh, dynamic programming or, or not to do it, uh, um, fail exercise on code words, uh, let me know. Do a look at the list myself and uh, and see what would be fun. I believe this one should be fun. I think that one is beautiful too. is probably a bit harder, maybe too hard for me, but the simpler version might be okay. Right. So no votes in the chat, so I'm just gonna pick and I think I'm gonna pick this one because uh, I believe this is fun. Um, so basically the, the idea here is that uh, we need to um, 
we need to program uh, we need to program uh, uh, a class which is a thing um, and we can do different things basically this is called uh, this sometimes called a DSL or domain specific language uh, it is basically a way to abuse uh, language features to, to define methods dynamically. Um, Let's try this one. So again, I was the, the link and we'll be doing JavaScript this time. things first we see the we need to write a constructor which accepts a name and then assigns it to the thing uh, so how do we write javascript again So let's try and just test test it. So we pass the first test and we'll be doing the whole exercise like that. Uh, I think it's a, a nice way to, to discover the exercise as well, just to look at the tests and see, see them failing and finishing them one by one. By one. So we can, um, we can iterate. So basically the difficulty here is to be able to, to write to write that chain dot is a dot woman should should define a property is a woman on a, on chain. So how we can do that? I think we can do that using property accessors in JavaScript. I just Google it because I can't remember how to do that, but basically it will uh, Allow us to implement uh, methods which, which will behave as um, as properties. So we need to implement a method is uh, so let's uh, let's write it. Uh, I need to define it as get so I can, uh, for example, if I do uh, if I do exactly exactly what they did. Um, 
if I do that, I'm gonna, I write this like that. Uh, is a, needs to behave like a, a property uh, of the object and not like a function. Otherwise, I would I would have to write that. So basically, I need to write it uh, as a getter. So it just uh, it just works. So the difficulty here is that this method should return a new a new thing, which allows us to call any method. Um, on the on this, basically the the it's it's a bit complicated to explain, but uh, the idea here is uh, that uh, calling the woman method on the return of is uh, object should assign should create a new method on the original thing, uh, which is called then that is a woman. On this method, should return true. Um, so I need a way to catch methods. And I think there is a, a way to do that too. Yeah, exactly that. Okay, so I think we'll, do, we'll be doing that. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's nice. We'll do that. I'll we'll just keep the doc right here. That one. So, basically, what we'll be doing is magic with JavaScript. So, I want this to return an object on which I can call anything, basically, woman, for example, and I want that to Set to create a, a method is a woman on uh, on the original thing. So I need to give it a target. Yes, that's the target. So that's going to be this and a handler, um, which will be a function which accepts target prop and receiver. What is your receiver? Oh, okay, it needs to, it's in fact an object with a get.
So basically, the prop here will, will be woman, for example, and I need to define is a woman and the, and the thing, which is the target. So let's do that. Um, So prop will be the name we'll be getting. So basically, the is a method will return our proxy object, which has a handler, which can basically intercept every attribute we, we try to get. So when we will call dot woman on this thing, it will call woman on that, and it will use the, or get handler here. And I have the target here. This way, I can just write in brackets like that and um, that's going to be a string defining a, a property on, on this object and I'll just assign the, the value true so basically gen dot is a woman which will be defined by the will return true so let's try that cannot read property do I have to return Okay, so is a uh, is implemented. Basically, we need to implement uh, uh, many other things. Uh, implementing is not a uh, uh, should be somewhat similar. We we'll just copy that. So we did exactly the same, and now more interesting thing. We need to be able to write Jane dot as to dot arms. So this is kind of different. Let's look how it works. So okay. So let's try by uh, implementing the getter as well as we did and oh, this time it's a, it's a function so just uh, just just write it like that Oh yeah, but this one must return a proxy as well um, because this is going to be the property we want to define. So okay, let's let's return another proxy. Just to the same here. 
keep shorter and this variable is absolutely useless so basically we need to change that again we need to set the this time the prop will be arms because uh, as we return uh, we we'll return our proxy and when we call the arms property it will put that so basically keep prop will be arms so that's perfect and now we want to be that to be an array and um, and we to populate our our array with the count uh, with the, the the correct count um, um, the the content should be things Thing should be named with the yeah, yeah. singular of that one. I uh, think I can. Uh, So I think I can write prop dot slice. So from zero to minus one to ex to exclude the one, and let's test. Oops. So basically, we want we now want a having function, which is exactly the same. So basically, we can do that. I think as is my design. Ah yes. Okay, so now we need to handle the one case because the test said Jen has one head and we need to create a single thing and uh, not put it in an array. Um, and therefore we need to, okay, okay. So basically,
there is a special case Okay, but we need to return it. So basically, we passed this test. So that was the same as before with the async. Um, but it only creates uh, one property. But then we need to, to be able to chain method calls. So basically, uh, when I call chain.as1.add, so basically the same as this test, it should return the new sync created in head. So I can chain having two i. So I have a sync name gen, having a sync name head, having two things named i. Uh, so that's gonna be easy. Just return the the target. I'll do the same as for the for the previous one because We'll see, we'll see later if it's needed. Okay, so now this works. This is chainable. We can write that. That's kind of cool. Um, and now we need to implement each. So I need this array to have um, to have a method name each, which accepts a function as a parameter. This, uh, by the way, if uh, some of you are not familiar with JavaScript, um, this syntax. Let's let's write it. It's like writing But it goes uh, a bit a bit further than, than that. It's um, because uh, here we need to be able to to call having, and uh, so we need to have a having method in uh, in the scope of the the function we call like this way. And I'm not sure yet to do that. How to do that? So basically.
Okay. That's bad. So maybe I can increase the proxy again, but I need to have in function to be defined within the scope of the of the function. Or maybe it's a, it's a shortcut. Let's try. So basically, first of all, we need to have each method on this thing. So let's do that and. Uh, I think we can do that quite easily. We just need to have each method on the target. Prop. So let's just do exactly that. Uh, it will take. Um, it will be a function taking a callback as parameter. I will just call that F. So um, this one should So we, I will iterate on each of the things in the in the target. Uh, for example, there are each ends. Will uh, I will iterate on those, and I will call f with element. But this one won't work, I think, because in the example something is not different because. Element is not defined. I not defined. Okay. Exactly as I said, I need having to be defined. Um, I'm not sure of how we can put that. I'll just try.
just look at the tests. So this is the array, which is the function. I wonder if I can just okay. If I define f dot having That works. Yeah, the, the issue is that having is not defined within F. So basically, this is a bit harder. Uh, I'm not really sure how to approach that. Uh, my issue is that there has been that I um, I can define the each method quite easily, but it accepts another method, method which I don't control, and I did need to make sure that whenever this this method is called, the having function is defined within its scope. And I'm quite not sure how to do that. Um, maybe I can do another proxy. But I'm not sure it will work. I try with uh, more, 
basic thing to, to see how it goes. I believe if I bind it, I think I can just bind it. Maybe, maybe it will work. Not sure I should bind this. I think I should do that. But it works. Oh yes. Do that. Okay, having is still not defined. Come see how, how we can defend. Uh, I will just look if there is an issue in the Yeah, okay. <laughs> Someone else has the, exactly the same issue as me. So I think because this comment is hidden, so somebody has found the solution, but I'll try to find, find, it, my, find it myself. Um, oh, shit. Okay. Um, so maybe I can define uh, having function on an outer scope
So maybe this will work. I think that's that's pretty uh, pretty ugly. But the idea is that I defined uh, having global variable, um, which I override for each element in the loop before calling the function. So in the function we can have the having function call, which should then refer to the having method of the element we want because I bind I bind it to the element. So just so this is correct. Um, Let's try. But I, ah, okay, so it works. But uh, I feel that's pretty bad uh, because now I'm making <laughs> having vi a variable in the in the wild. I'm not sure if this is the the way the the exercise is, in, is intended to work because I don't find it uh, really really nice. But anyways, it works. So I pass the test. I guess it's that. Um, so just to, to recap, because uh, that one uh, that part was uh, was quite hard. Basically, um, we we spent some time trying to make that that, that test pass. Um, so the as two is, is already fi figured out. So basically, uh, we are this which which implements it. More specifically, in this branch, so we created the things in the target uh, dot ends so so that that's nice and all um, but but then we need an, we needed an each function in uh, on the, the, the return the property uh, which accepts a function which we called f um, on the load to define uh, Different more, more things on each thing uh, we had. So basically, uh, the end here is absolutely unused in the, in the example. So, but uh, we give it anyways. So we call the f function, but we needed an having function, which is uh, it, which was not written like that. If that uh, that would have, have, have worked without me doing anything else, uh, like I did, but uh, it didn't. Uh, I can't uh, I can't change the, the test so it has to work like that so basically I created the having global variable which I just override each time before calling the function to the, the correct having method so for this method of each element but uh, we override it uh, one after each other so that's pretty bad but uh, <laughs> Uh, let's uh, reset it after because uh, otherwise we would be leaking the uh, having function bound to an element of previously defined thing. But by the way, uh, this exercise is not intended to be a production code or anything like, I guess that, that, like that. It's, uh, it's just to abuse the, the language features to to create some things. Um, but we passed the test, so I think that's cool. Um, The parent of. Okay, so we need the Easter method. Let's do that. Again, we'll copy that. So is the should I turn a proxy with a method parent of Okay, so mm 
So we need to return, so the ister method should return another one with the parent of proxy. So So basically, we the is the is now returning an object, uh, which will work because we it's just chaining there. So is the return an, an object with the property parent of, which is there, which will accept any name as a property and set the and set the correct one of um, and uh, and the thing. So just. So we just assign the name from the proxy. So basically, the parent of will be a proxy. Um, and when we call the when we call the any method on this, for example, the show method or the show property, um, we'll just uh, we'll just assign the the parent of attribute of the target. So basically, if I test. It will behave exactly la like it's uh, designed to. So next one, and two eyes each. Okay, okay. So now I need to define the being the and there is color that green how does it works so being the must assign the next property name with the next property value okay this one is fine it's funny it's funny too so we need to be to define this one is starting to go, to go crazy um, has to be a proxy proxying an element and the number so basically this time this is a bit complicated this one should say the prop will be okay so that's that's gonna be good but this one should return a new proxy again but this time but in the first time uh, in the, the first uh, get call we use the prop as the name of the of the variable to set so basically 
we want to return a new proxy. So let's let me name that uh, A. And return another this time target name equal and I think it will work. And we'll use that just after because just because let's test. Okay, so it works. Nice trick. Um, okay, on two more methods to implement. So, okay, cool. On the Nice, but we need to return yet another one. Maybe there, there is something better. Or oh, we can just return an object. Um, With the on the property um, and we assign it. And so basically, we'll chain uh, we'll chain that. So when we get a value, uh, we return an object. So basically, in this case, uh, being the dot color, we'll call the first proxy here. So we get the name of the property to set, which is color, uh, and we return. An New proxy, so the next dot when uh, when it calls blue, uh, it uh, goes into this proxy uh, with the name blue because the, that's the name of the property, and we assign it, and then we return an object from there with uh, under property assigned to that again, so we can chain. Basically, we we return to the being the point. So basically, I think that should work. Let's test. Yep, perfect. So, okay, and that one should be easy. which will return a new proxy this time time it's a setter because uh, because it accepts some it accepts some argument I guess
Okay, no, I think I, I can use this one. This one. Exactly like that. Not really sure on this one. Be able to intercept any method call. Okay, perfect. Okay, looks nice. So, trace method. Uh, and I just need to return the function. Okay. Um, so basically, my question was, how can we, um, how can we make that work? Because there, uh, can should return a proxy as we figured out. But then I, I should be able to, to call any method on this. But basically, this, I just copy that, is a shortcut for, for something like that. It's basically the same. So speak can be intercepted with a, with a get proxy. So, um, we just need to return a function, accepting a function, and But I then need name to be in the scope. Um, uh, 
Defined. Okay, so I, I think we need another global here. And uh, I put a much using it anywhere. Okay, so that will wait on the proxy calling the speak method then call this with the can name speak and then we need to define the method Okay, we have to return the method, which accepts a function as a parameter, and on set target can name f. And I think I need to wrap that again. Sets the name global variable because it's just there, and I turn that that was the way I think. I think I'll apply okay. But I think work gen is not defined oh yes okay so this one works this one So okay. So basically now we need to implement a modified version of this. So basically this uh, this proxy we need to modify this. Um, Now, instead of expecting a function, it can accept either a function like before because we still need to support the previous test case, or it can it can accept a name and then a function. 
so basically we we'll just uh, we we'll just check uh, Okay, so now we need to. Okay. So if we have a recorder, we'll just um, set target recorder We set it there Don't set it like that I'll just uh, assign it some empty array So basically if I get spoke here I assign the method spoke or the attribute spoke to the to the scene to the target which is the initial scene and then um, we'll have a, we'll have this method be called and um, and there we need to Add the return value of the function into an record. Into, into that. Um, let's do this. Okay. Let's test. Okay. So basically, we did it. It was quite a, quite hard to. Um, as, I, as I said before, uh, obviously this one is intended as an uh, as an exercise just to to use tricks with the with the language, uh, which we did uh, in quaint let's see way. I'm not sure I'm, I'm really proud of all, all of this, but uh, I think this is, I think this is funny and I love uh, beta programming. So uh, I hope you learn a thing of, or two about uh, how to trick uh, with uh, with JavaScript. Obviously. Uh, this uh, shouldn't be um, called you losing uh, your day, day to day life, uh, especially in JavaScript. Uh, it's quite common in, uh, in Ruby, for example, to, to define uh, complete, uh, complete uh, DSLs uh, this way uh, because uh, it, feels, uh, it feels nice. You can just write uh, English and uh, by the magic of, uh, of uh, metaprogramming, you can uh, the method calls uh, of any names and uh, assign attributes uh, like we did uh, so this is a quite powerful powerful tool um, you will enjoy to use that i, I believe uh, anyways uh, it's been two hours so the time has been as uh, ended for this session um, i hope you, you enjoyed it uh, of course uh, you can let me know uh, if you have any feedback in the in the chat and, um, and uh, i'll see you uh, next time uh, for the for the for the next session, uh, I'm not sure about the the date uh, date yet. Uh, I'm uh, I'm from France. I'm a French guy. That's why I have a, I have a really bad accent. <laughs> and uh, and uh, for the next session, uh, maybe something I, I I'd like to try is to showcase uh, a professional project. Uh, so working on something. Uh, I'll do for for real work uh, and uh, explain uh, the what uh, what I'm doing, uh, what are the, the the constraints or the specifics uh, of what I'm working on. And I believe this is 
can be quite interesting, but uh, let me know if you have uh, other ideas. Uh, anyway, that's going to be the end of this session. Thank you everyone for coming, and I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, see you in the next session. Bye-bye.